Original Sin, A Neutral Overview, Definition and Origins. Original sin is a theological concept found primarily in Christian doctrine, which posits that the sin of the first humans, Adam and Eve, is inherited by all of their descendants. This concept is rooted in the narrative of the fall of man in the book of Genesis in the Bible, where Adam and Eve disobey God by eating the forbidden fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, theological basis, Christianity. Catholicism. The Catholic Church teaches that original sin is transmitted to all humans by natural generation, making everyone born with a sinful nature and a need for divine grace for salvation. This is typically remedied through the sacrament of baptism, which is believed to cleanse the soul of original sin. The Catechism of the Catholic Church states, By his sin Adam, as the first man, lost the original holiness he had received from God, not only for himself, but for all humans. Adam and Eve transmitted to their descendants human nature, wounded by their own first sin, and hence deprived of original holiness and justice. This deprivation is called original sin. As a result of original sin, human nature is weakened in its powers, subject to ignorance, suffering, and the domination of death, and inclined to sin this inclination is called concupiscence. Anselm of Canterbury wrote, The sin of Adam was one thing, but the sin of children at their birth is quite another. The former was the cause. The latter is the effect. The effects of Adam's sin, according to the Catholic Encyclopedia, are death and suffering. One man has transmitted to the whole human race not only the death of the body, which is the punishment of sin, but even sin itself, which is the death of the soul concupiscence or inclination to sin. Baptism erases original sin, but the inclination to sin remains. Absence of sanctifying grace in the newborn child. This absence is also an effect of the first sin. Baptism confers original sanctifying grace, lost through Adam's sin, thus eliminating original sin and any personal sin. The Catholic Church teaches that every human person born on earth is made in the image of God. Within man is both the powerful surge toward the good, because we are made in the image of God, and the darker impulses toward evil, because of the effects of original sin. The Catechism explains that in yielding to the tempter, Adam and Eve committed a personal sin, but this sin affected the human nature that they would then transmit in a fallen state. Original sin is called sin only in an analogical sense. It is a sin contracted, and not committed, a state and not an act. The doctrine of original sin does not impute the sin of the father to his children, but merely states that they inherit from him a human nature deprived of original holiness and justice, which is transmitted by propagation to all mankind. The doctrine of the Immaculate Conception of Mary holds that Mary was conceived free from original sin. The Most Blessed Virgin Mary was, from the first moment of her conception, by a singular grace and privilege of Almighty God, and by virtue of the merits of Jesus Christ, Saviour of the human race, preserved immune from all stain of original sin. The doctrine of the Immaculate Conception is a teaching of the Roman Catholic Church that holds that the Virgin Mary was conceived without original sin. This belief is distinct from the doctrine of the virgin birth of Jesus Christ, the Immaculate Conception to the belief that Mary, the mother of Jesus, was conceived in the womb of her mother, St. Anne, without the stain of original sin. This means that from the very moment of her conception, Mary was preserved by God from the lack of sanctifying grace that afflicts all other human beings because of the fall of Adam and Eve. The preservation of Mary from original sin was made possible through the anticipated merits of Jesus Christ. The Church teaches that this special grace was granted to Mary in view of the future sacrifice of Christ, which would redeem humanity. The Immaculate Conception underscores Mary's unique role in salvation history as the mother of Jesus, by being conceived without sin. Mary was made a fitting vessel to bear the Son of God. While the doctrine is not explicitly stated in the Bible, 
it is supported by certain passages interpreted by the church. One key verse is Luke 1 28, where the angel Gabriel greets Mary as full of grace, which is seen as indicative of her unique holiness from the moment of her conception. The belief in Mary's sinlessness can be traced back to early Christian writings. Saints and theologians like Augustine, Ambrose, and John Chrysostom wrote about Mary's purity and special role, laying the groundwork for the formal doctrine. Over centuries, theologians debated and refined the understanding of Mary's conception. By the Middle Ages, the doctrine was widely accepted in the Western Church, though it faced some theological challenges. The Immaculate Conception was formally defined as a dogma of the Roman Catholic Church by Pope Pius IX on December 8, 1854, in the papal ball in a fabulous dies. The definition states, we declare, pronounce, and define that the doctrine which holds that the most blessed Virgin Mary, in the first instance of her conception, by a singular grace and privilege granted by Almighty God, in view of the merits of Jesus Christ, the Saviour of the human race, was preserved free from all stain of original sin, is a doctrine revealed by God, and therefore to be believed firmly and constantly by all the faithful. The Immaculate Conception emphasizes the holiness and special role of Mary in God's plan of salvation. It highlights the belief that God's grace can act in extraordinary ways to prepare individuals for their unique missions. The doctrine is central to Catholic Marian devotion, reinforcing Mary's status as a model of purity and obedience to God's will. It inspires prayers and practices that honor her, such as the celebration of the Feast of the Immaculate Conception on December 8th. Catholics believe that because of her unique grace, Mary is a powerful intercessor who can pray for and assist the faithful in their spiritual and temporal needs. Protestantism Many Protestant denominations also adhere to the doctrine of original sin, though interpretations vary. Martin Luther and John Calvin emphasized its profound impact on human nature, stressing that human beings are inherently sinful and require God's grace for redemption. Eastern Orthodoxy The Eastern Orthodox Church believes in ancestral sin rather than original sin, focusing on the consequences of Adam and Eve's disobedience, such as mortality and the propensity to sin rather than the guilt of the first sin itself being inherited. Judaism, the concept of original sin, the understood in Christianity, does not exist in Judaism. Jewish interpretations of the Genesis narrative emphasize human free will and the potential for repentance and atonement for sins committed by individuals. Islam, in Islam, there is no concept equivalent to original sin, Muslims believe that Adam and Eve sinned, but they repented and were forgiven by Allah. Consequently, there is no inherited sin passed down through generations. Each person is born free of sin and is accountable for their own actions. Biblical basis. The belief in original sin is primarily derived from the following biblical passages. Genesis 3. This chapter recounts the story of Adam and Eve's disobedience in the Garden of Eden, which results in their expulsion from paradise and the introduction of sin and death into the world. Psalm 51-5 I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. This verse is often interpreted as an acknowledgement of inherent sinfulness from conception. Romans 5-12-21 In this passage, Paul writes, Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin. And in this way death came to all people, because all sinned. Paul elaborates on the idea that through Adam's transgression, sin and death spread to all humanity, and contrasts this with the salvation offered through Jesus Christ. Philosophical and ethical considerations. The doctrine of original sin has been a subject of considerable debate and analysis among theologians philosophers, and ethicists. Key points of discussion include Human nature. Original sin raises questions about the inherent nature of humans. Are people born inherently good, evil, or neutral? 
How does original sin influence human behavior and morality? Justice and fairness, the idea that individuals are born with the stain of sin due to the actions of their ancestors, challenges notions of justice and individual responsibility. Critics argue it is unfair to hold descendants accountable for the actions of their forebears. Role of baptism, in Christian contexts, baptism is seen as a remedy for original sin, but its necessity and efficacy are debated within and outside of Christian communities, cultural and historical impact. The concept of original sin has profoundly influenced Western thought, law and culture. It has shaped views on human nature, morality, and the need for redemption. Throughout history, it has been used to justify various social and political structures, including hierarchies and the need for governance, modern perspectives. In contemporary theology and philosophy, original sin continues to be a topic of discussion and reinterpretation. Some modern theologians and denominations have sought to reinterpret or even reject traditional views of original sin in light of contemporary and understandings of justice, human nature, and scientific insights into human development and psychology. Conclusion Original sin remains a complex and multifaceted doctrine with varying interpretations and implications across different religious traditions and philosophical viewpoints. It continues to influence religious teachings, ethical discussions, and cultural norms, underscoring its enduring significance in human thought and belief systems.